Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Photography Podcast. My name is Drew Zink and today I'm going to be continuing on with my talk about flash. Now I first have to apologize, I don't have a, uh, a microphone for my HD camera yet, so I'm recording audio separately here on my iPhone. Secondly, if you do hear some background noise, uh, this is a newly built um, uh, prefab home, well not prefab, but uh, a, a model home, and because of that, they're doing uh, some landscaping work right outside, so you may hear that a little bit in the background, hopefully uh, not too much. But we will press on, and like I said, today I'm going to be talking about how I bounce my flashes into rooms. Now, let me go back and say that when I talked the last time about flash, I said that I put everything on manual. Uh, I like to use manual because it helps me control, have, let me have control of how my flash and how much flash gets put into rooms. I don't like TTL. I never use TTL when I'm lighting interiors. So the first thing I do, like I said, camera and manual. And I typically will bounce my flash in behind the camera with the flash head turned backwards into the wall that is right behind me. And I let the light then spread out very nicely over the room in front. Now often we get into a space where we might not have a wall right behind us. So that's where I bring in my two foot by two foot reflector. And you can pick these up at pretty much any local camera store. And I just bring it in right in behind my flash just like a wall. Let the light bounce right off my flash and scatter into the room. Now sometimes uh, just using a bounce, even uh, with a wall or uh, with, the, um, with the reflector isn't enough. Sometimes you get a really richly colored wall that you can't bounce into and you're pressed up because of the size of the room so close to the wall that you can't really get your uh, reflector in behind to have a nice soft bounce. So that's when I bring in my umbrella. And this is just a, uh, about a three foot umbrella. And the way I use this is when my, cam when my flash is on camera, I will turn my flash around just like this. And I will then tilt my flash more straight up, but slightly forward but prompt more, um, more straight up. And I bring my umbrella that I have here and bring it in just over the camera, just like this. And uh, usually this is enough space. You know, it's only about two feet or so. If I need to go out a little more, I can. But if I need to, don't have as much space in behind, I can bring it like this and shoot the flash through the shoot through umbrella. And I picked this one up at my local camera store for I think about 15 bucks. It's about a 36 inch uh, umbrella, shoot through only, it's not a bounce. Um, but for 15 bucks, it is, you know, one of those things that I use almost on every shoot because there's always a room somewhere that, you know, you have to be backed up into a tight corner and uh, you can't bounce because of either uh, you're too close to the wall or because of wall color. Now, those are the two ways or three ways, bounce directly into a wall, bounce directly into a reflector, or shot through my shoot through umbrella. Those are the three ways that I use my on-camera flash. If I need to use off-camera flash because maybe there's a very dark portion to the room in comparison to the rest of the room, there are two different things I use. The first is a very inexpensive six foot impact uh, light stand with an umbrella head or umbrella bracket. I think the light stand ran about 20 or 25 bucks at B&H. The bracket, another 10 to 15 at my local camera store. Again, you can pick these up pretty much anywhere. Uh, what I like about the six footers is one, they're really inexpensive, 
and two, they're really lightweight, and they stay pretty compact. And uh, so I use this uh, rig to, again, put into a corner off camera to maybe bounce into a wall, just like this, or I will use my umbrella and put it in the umbrella bracket. I also will sometimes, sometimes I have to light both up and down. I need a little bit of a, a reflection kicked in low. So what I'll do there is, again, I'll use my stand and I will bring in a reflector like this and then set a flash down below to kick in, reflect in, and that's how I get light down lower. Now finally, the last thing I sometimes will do for off-camera flash is I have one of these. It's about a $35 tripod. And the reason I like the 35, this $35 tripod is that uh, when I close it here, I can get this footprint very small, and it's a little unstable here because I'm on carpet, but I can make the footprint much, much smaller than what I can on my, on my uh, light stand. And the reason I like that is because sometimes I have to tuck my light before, when I bounce it into really tight areas so that I can't see it from the camera. This is the way to go. Again, this tripod I think was like 35 bucks, my local camera store. It's, it's invaluable as well because there are a lot of times where I just need to tuck a light just at a camera site and this is the only way to do it because the footprint of the light stand is just too much. Well, that's it for now. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll be glad to answer anything I can. Uh, oh, let me say this, that regardless of where my flash is, that I do put it on manual. Again, no TTL anywhere, strictly manual. And to fire my off-camera flashes, sometimes I use pocket wizards, but most of the time, I just use the SU4 modes in the Nikon flashes. I find that they work great and they're very reliable. So as I said, that's it for now. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much.